Well, hi everyone again. Um, so thanks a lot for joining us for today's webinar, HR as a business partner. We are very excited to kickstart this HR webinar series that we have uh, and, and to have all of you join us for the first session. This webinar is for those who want to value add to the organizations and to become a strategic partner to their business. So for our webinar today, it will be a one hour session. 45 minutes of content, 15 minutes of Q&A, but you know, just feel free to drop in your uh, questions in the chat at any point during the session and we'll be here to answer. And also, of course, uh, this will be a very interactive session. And uh, so, you know, Morris here, our HR consultant will be asking questions throughout the session. So feel free to just answer them along the way, just so that we can help each other as much as possible, answer each other's questions and get more value out of this webinar session. So with, uh, I'm Uditi, the account manager. Uh, Morris is the HR consultant. And here, also Vijay here is the founder and CEO of NewSmart. And without further ado, I'll just hand over the time to Morris, our HR consultant. So over to you, Morris. Thank you, Uditi. I hope everybody can hear me well. Good morning. This is the first uh, session uh, of our series of HR Talk that I'll be conducting. And uh, please take note that this webinar is recorded. And if anybody wants a copy, please approach uh, Uditi. Now, let me share my screen with you. Okay, before I jump, start into my presentation, let me give you a little bit of introduction about myself. As a seasoned HR practitioner, I have more than 38 years of HR experience covering the full spectrum of HR function. I've worked as a HR director for more than 10 over years before embarking as a HR consultant in Myanmar and now in Singapore. I have been exposed to various industries such as IT, engineering, healthcare, manufacturing, oil and gas, retail, etc. I also has been exposed to the Asia Pacific region, covering countries like Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, up to the North, China, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and to the South, uh, Australia, and into the West, India. So uh, I do have quite good knowledge of the various uh, countries HR practices and regulation. Currently, I'm a product manager and HR consultant for New Vista Technologies. Today, I'll be covering what it takes to become a HR business partner, a term that is commonly used today, but I'm not sure if everybody knows what it takes to become a HR business partner. There are many common challenges that HR are facing. And I would like to share some of these challenges as well as queries and issues that I have received as a consultant. And I would like to share with you some of the tips. I will also share how New Vista and I can help you to become a better HR business partner. So for those who do not know about New Vista Technologies, let me just explain a little bit. New Vista was established in 2002 and is the leading provider of cloud-based integrated IT solution. We are now a NetSuite partner since 2012. And uh, in 2005, we have started New Smart, which is a HR management system developed on NetSuite. And today we have a variety of clients using our HR management system in all over the region here. Our HR MS covers various HR modules such as recruitment, payroll, attendance, leave, training, performance, expenses, assets. And this HMS is available on web portal as well as mobile application, both iOS 
as well as Android. Beside HRMS, we do provide HR consulting and payroll outsourcing services. And do tap on us if you require assistance in this area. Now, I will now start my presentation, but before I jump into the common challenges of employer, I would like to share with you a slide and I want to ask you, how many of this company have you heard of? I believe some of you were no Kodak, Nokia, they are still around. But what about the others? Olivetti, Android, Borders, TDK, Compact, Britannica. What happened to them? Some of this company, or most of this company, are leaders or number one in the world during their peak years ago. But where are they today? Some has been acquired. Some has lost its shine. Some has disappeared. Bankrupt and ceased operation. Well, what is important is that as a company, we must always be successful in order to survive. And how do we know? when a company is successful. We will know that a company is successful when the company is progressing. When it's growing, it's expanding. Then we know that the company is successful. And for a company to expand and progress, they need to be profitable. Not only during the short term, but as well as continuously over the long-term period. And in order to make good profits, company must be able to have good quality product. Their products must be always be innovative, changing with time and meeting the needs and requirement of the consumer or customer. And to do that, to ensure that they have good quality product, they need to have good processes in the organization. Processes that are consistent and efficient. And to ensure that they have good processes, what they need is the right people. People that are able to contribute to the company in terms of the process, in terms of innovation, and in terms of services. So this is the key and critical piece of a company in their, pro in their progression to expand their business. So people is always the key. That's what they have said. People are the assets of the organization. And therefore, HR play a very important role because we are the people who looks after the people of the organization. So what are the common challenges of employees today? Okay. Every organization are faced with how to attract people to the organization, to their organization. How do we retain and motivate people to perform well? How do we reward them who are, to those who are performing well? How do we recognize and develop high potential? to ensure that they will continue to contribute to the organization. These are always the common challenges of the company 
and HR we need to help the management to eliminate these challenges. And as HR, we cover the various area. And we have to look at HR governance to make sure that our policies are in line with the legal legislation. We have to look at recruitment. Here I put the word resourcing because I believe as a HR business partner, you go beyond recruitment, which I will talk in the next session, where you will be heavily involved in manpower planning, in getting the right talents, and into onboarding these people. We also have to look at comment bank, performance management, training and development, employee engagement. With today HR staff being very lean, most organizations will only have one or two HR staff. Using technology, such as the HRMS, is very critical and will be of great help to get things done quickly. No longer do we have to use pen and paper and create bottlenecks in all the various activities. So what is a HR business partner? According to David Arich, as a HR business partner, there are two major areas that you have to focus on. One is the strategic area. The other is the operation. For the strategic focus, you have to be very much involved in developing strategies that are aligned to the overall company objective. You need to be a change agent. You need to champion change and always making improvements, not only in HR function, but across the organization. You need to be always engaging with employees as an employee's champion, and also administratively be an expert. So whatever administrative process that you put in place, they must be efficient. They must be able to help managers and employees in their work. The last thing that managers and employees want is added administrative tasks. As HR, if you can streamline that, reduce the administrative tasks, managers and employees will love you. And one way to do that is to automate your process. So as a HR business partner, once needs to be both strategic and operational. So if you are just focusing on the administrative part and not the strategic side, then you are not a business partner. You are just a HR profession. So uh, some of the common queries that I do receive from HR profession as a HR consultant, I would like to share with you and uh, also discuss some of the things and give you some tips. Now, this is a real life issue. Okay, I've seen this, I pick it up from an employment contract uh, where they put the working hours. So if you read this clause, two clause, can you tell me where is the error? If you know the answer, you can type it in the chat box.
Anybody can spot? Anybody want to try? If you know, you can raise your hand and Uditi can. So we have an answer. Uh, so sole discretion of the company should be mutually agreed. Well, that's not an answer. <laughs> unfortunately, and unfortunately, that's not the answer. Well, the answer is basically in the 41 hours. <clears throat> All right. Uh, there were some changes. I understand they had some changes to their working time and then they did not change the 41 hours. If you were to count manually, 9 to 6.30 minus one hour is 8.5 hours and you times four is 34 hours. And for Friday, it's 7.5. So if you add together, it's 41.5 and not 41. So small mistake such as this can have a big implication to the company if HR people are not careful. Employees can then take the case up and sue the company for compensation of the 0.5 hours. All right. So this is very serious. So sometimes it may look very correct, but if you look through and calculate properly, you will find that it doesn't tally. The 41 hours and the working hours, 9 to 6.30, 9 to 5.30, does not tally. And you can lead to legal implication. So be careful. Here is another classic example. And this is what I faced many, many times. Bosses always comes to me. Boris, one of my employees absent for three days. Please terminate him immediately. Is this correct? What should they have to do? Raise your hand if you spot or you want to share your view or your comments. It is important as a HR that you must be very well versed with the Employment Act and the other labor legislation. I used to, uh, my boss used to tell me when I was a young HR profession, the Employment Act is like a Bible to you. Read it well, memorize it. Well, under the Employment Act, okay, if anyone is absent for two days or more, it is deemed that the person wants to resign from the company. And as such, if the person needs to resign, the person needs to give notice. And if that person did not give notice, the company can pursue the employee for compensation for the salary in view of the notice period and not terminate and pay two weeks or one month notice to the employee okay. 
or not pay any notice. So many a times the employees, employer would find that employees who have absent for two days or more will terminate the employee without notice. And then the employee will start taking legal action against the employer for compensation because of one error. Okay. So please bear this in mind. When an employee is absent, that means the employee has one thing to terminate the employment contract and he or she needs to give notice period and the employer should pursue that. Okay, we'll go on to some of the other common queries that I've received. Okay, what is the difference between a contract of service and a contract for service? Well, nowadays, the answer can be found in MOM. If you go to MOM website, you'll be able to see it spelled very clearly. What is the difference between a contract of service and a contract for service? A contract of service is actually an employment contract, but a contract for service is a contract between a principal and a contractor, or client and a contractor, or company and contractor. And for contract for service, usually the principal or the company does not have uh, rights okay, to stipulate rules and regulation to the contractors. But what I want to highlight is that people may know the difference, but when they draft the contract, they tend to make a lot of mistakes. And usually when you draft a contract for service, they will continue to use the term like salary, employment, annual leave, resignation, words that appears in an employment contract. And this could be very risky because the person can then take your contract for service to the court and argue that it's employment contract. So sometimes you may know the difference, but because of the wording in the contract, it can be interpreted as a contract of service instead of contract for service. So, to be a HR business partner, again, you need to have a legal mind to draft contracts. If you do not, then it's good to consult a lawyer before you make errors or mistakes that can have legal implications. What should be spelled out in an employment contract? Again, with the recent change in the Employment Act, it has stated that all employers or companies when they issue employment contracts, there are key employment terms, KET for short, key employment terms that need to be specified okay, in the employment contract, such as salary, working hours, Workplace, job responsibility, annual leave, allowances, etc. So, such terms must be clearly spelled out. So, if you have an con employment contract that are not clearly spelled out, then you may be, be invited for this session in the Ministry of Manpower. Next, if an employee falls sick during his annual leave, can he cancel his annual leave? So again, this answer can be found in the Employment Act. And the answer is no. 
Okay, if the employee fell six on his off rest day, off day, annual leave, he cannot replace that leave with the sick leave. And the last question, if a worker works on a public holiday, what is the overtime rate? Again, here, many people will tell the employee, it is two time. And this is not correct. Okay. Because in your monthly salary, the holiday pay is already included. And if you work on a holiday, you only get paid one day. So at one time. Of course, there are some company that goes beyond the law. They are more generous. They can offer 1.5 or two times. But in many cases, usually, as far as I know, company don't do that. Okay. So, as a HR business partner, it is very important that you know the law, whether you are in Singapore, whether you are in Malaysia, or whether you are in Indonesia, or whether you are in Singapore handling employees in Malaysia, Indonesia, you need to know the legal legislation of that country very well have a good understanding. And if you have questions, always raise the queries to the Ministry, to the Ministry of Manpower or to the Ministry of Labour and ask them for an answer. It is good to make sure that you know all the different areas of the Employment Act or law. So some of the challenges that HR business partner finds difficulty are how do we attract people to join? Okay. To apply for jobs in their company. Okay. So in today's tight labor market trying to get people to apply for a job in in your company can be very tough sometimes you may get very few response or application so how do you increase the hit rate well as a hr business partner you now have to become very creative you need to wear your marketing hat. You know, to think, how can I make my advertisement, job advertisement, stand up above the rest? What should I do? How should I publicize? Okay. Sometimes it's not only the job advertisement, but also the employer branding. So it is important that HR people works with the company marketing people to publicize the company, to spread the company news, events to as many people as possible. With technology, with social media, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have LinkedIn, and many others. These are good platforms to showcase your company, to let people know what your company does and what your company do, does well, and get them excited about your company. So that when you advertise for a job, 
you will get good response. So it's good that for HR, you try to work with your marketing to publicize your company by showing case of good employee practices, a company, uh, employees outing or projects, successful projects done by your employees or voluntary work and so forth. So as you can see in today's social media, many companies are publicizing their events regularly. Next, how do we create job grading and salary ranges? Well, it all depends on company strategy. So there is no right answer. Some companies may like to have a tall structure and they can have 10 to 15 grades. Some would like to have a flat structure and they can have one to, they can have three to five grades. It's fine. It all depends on what the company wants. And for salary ranges, again, it depends on the company philosophy. Some can have it 1.5 spread, some can have two. Right. And then we have to ensure that the salary ranges are aligned with the market. And that's where HR has to wear the intelligent hat and do a lot of data gathering. How do we match job to each grade? So once you have a job grading, who should be in that, in which grade? And as a child, you have to do your job evaluation. All right. So it's not easy to job, do job evaluation. There are only a few uh, vendors that do that. Uh, just for your, for your information in Singapore, very soon you will have a national job evaluation framework that companies can use to evaluate their job. How do we identify high potential employees and how do we retain them? Well, most common way of identifying high potential employees is through the performance management system. But unfortunately, some companies do not even have a good performance management system in place. Some do have, but they are not executed or implemented properly. It's many take it as just a paper exercise. And they will just mark everybody averaged or above averaged. And they don't use it to identify high potential. Of course, beside performance management, we can use feedback, we can use observation, and so forth. Most people will always look at good performer, but how do we deal with poor performance? Many companies just leave, it, leave them alone after the performance management exercise. Okay. It is just put in the performance management form. They need further 
development and then that's it okay. so as a child we need to step in and make sure that poor performance goes through a development plan or improvement plan to make sure that the performance will improve in the next few months. If they lack the skill, then they should send for training. If they lack the know-how, then they need to be coached. Then they have to go through on the job training with an expert or with a manager or with a senior employee because if you do not do anything to the poor performers they will be the ones that will pull the organization down they will create morale issue between the good and good performers and themselves so it's important that we deal not only with good performance, but also with the poor performance. And the last question here is always a classic. How do we manage the younger generation of employees, those from the millennium and the Gen X? As HR business partner, you need to understand that different employees have different needs and different expectations. In today's young generation of employees, they are more educated, their needs are different. They are more concerned with learning they want to learn as much as they can. They are always looking for career progression. They are very ambitious. They want to plan the career as fast as possible. They want flexibility. They want freedom. Freedom to express. Freedom to work different hours, different places. And they are all very tax savvy. So they want to work with things with te that has technology in it. Everything, if you continue to use pen and paper, it will not go as well with this employee. They will ask, why are you not automating this process? Why are you not using a system? Right. And they will get frustrated and they will leave. So as HR business partner, you need to manage the expectation, their needs, and you need to understand that it's different from the needs of the baby boomers. So these are some of the queries the issues that I've come across as a HR consultant that I'd like to share with you and I hope I have given you some tips how to deal with such issue. If you do have any other issues or queries, do feel free to drop in the chat box and I'll try my best to answer it during the Q&A session. So how can we help you? Right. Well, we are here to help you create a new way of working. We do have our consulting services where we can help you look at due diligence of your HR in terms of compliances. We can help you in terms of employee engagement and talent management. As you know, we have our HRMS system, New Smart, and that can be used as a self-service by the employees and managers for attendance, e-leave, performance, etc. And of course, we do have an outsourced service that we can look at the payroll, 
training and so forth. In terms of our HR consultancy, we not only help to set up processes and policies and train your HR people, we can also help you refine or strengthen your existing HR policies and processes. You can leverage on our experience and we will guide you, share with you the insights of how to get things done and we will give you the direction and support from our professional. In terms of HR methodology, consultancy methodology, we will go in and do a physical study to understand your business before we do or act on anything. We try to understand your values, your culture, and then we will do an audit to find out your strength, weakness, the opportunity and the threat of your HR function. We will identify the gaps and help you develop strategies, action plans to close those gaps. Okay. On top of that, we will help you to implement and we will follow up to make sure that the action plan is successfully implemented. We can help you deliver okay, HR audit, legal compliances, policies, metrics, job analysis, performance management, succession planning, etc. Our HR consultancy can be on a project basis or it can be ongoing as a retainer services where we can provide you with advisory service or help you resolve on and off issues. All right, with that, I end my session and I'll now open up to the floor for any questions. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone uh, who have joined us today. Uh, just, just a note here that the following webinars will actually be covering different aspects of HR. So there will be recruitment, payroll, performance management, employee engagement, HR consulting, understanding the Employment Act, uh, compensation, development, being employees. So uh, these are just the different webinars. So, you know, there will be a survey at the end of this webinar. So once uh, you leave the webinar, when once it ends, the survey will pop up automatically and we'll be uh, over there. There's a question where we ask about, you know, which topics you're interested in. And you can also feel free to let us know if there's any other topic you're interested in. So yeah, we'd really love to hear your feedback that you have from today's session. So that, so that we can always continue to do better. And of course, what topics you want to have hear from us in the future. Also, I've left my email in the chat. Uh, so if there are any HR related matters you want to reach out to us for, just let, uh, you can email to me. And we do have some Q and A's time as well now. So drop them in the chat if you have any questions. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you everyone. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you.